How did that feel getting called up to the senior team? I mean, I know when I played for Canada, it was like the coolest experience ever. I mean, being... Cello lifts it over, and they've got the equalizer! It's Liam Frazier! Solid all night in the middle of the park. Gets forward, free header, diving header, sticks it into the back of the net. He's not gonna... We are live! What's up? What's up? We are back with the Pro Mentality, and today we have a very special guest. We have Liam Frazier, Toronto FC homegrown player and Canadian men's national team player. Ooh, ooh, I have to, I have to give a little ooh, ooh to my, my fellow Canadian. Were you um, thinking about ever going to the college process, or was it kind of like, no, here I want to go play. This is this is my thing, and you just went right to right to that. Yeah, for me and and, and everybody's going to be different. Just for me, I. I didn't really have any passion in school. So as much as like it sounded nice to go to school in Florida, in, in in Los Angeles, wherever, it was kind of just, I would love to, but the second you kind of have to, you have to sacrifice like more time when you could be playing football or doing something you really like, like a hobby or whatever it is, to, to, to do something that, like, like school, I just, I got no interest in. And it's funny you say that because I'm actually taking school right now. All <laughs> right. Like, okay. What yeah, classes? Yeah. What classes? I'm, I, there's a business school in, Ryerson, uh, in Toronto called Ryerson that I'm in right now. And I, I like it. But at the time, <laughs> at the time, I wasn't really ready to sacrifice my time where I could get better to, uh, to also pursue school. Did you, did you have like a ch- chance to make a decision and it was like, should I go to college or should I stay in the academy? Was there a time like that or it was never like a day to make that decision? No, like it, you, like you get offers, you get visits, there, uh, there's people coming to speak to you and, uh, and obviously there's, there's interest. But I mean... Did you have nobody... a, lot of, a lot of American universities? Yeah, it was. It was to be fair. It was all American University. How were some of your mentors that helped you so far? Yeah, I think it's. A, I think for all of, for all of young athletes and just young professionals, you always say your parents. So for me, was was my pops for sure. He was probably the, the the number one, and and was a huge was a huge impact on who I am as a person and a player. But the one difference, big difference between Canadian um, university colleges and American is that um, American universities or colleges, they can give full scholarships. In Canada, you can't. So that's why it's kind of like uh, when you get an offer in Canada for sports, there's not really much in it. Um, but obviously, when you get it in the States, it's a lot bigger financially. So it's a lot more like lucrative to want to go to something like that than it is to go in Canada and you get 20% of your, uh, of your uh, tuition covered, right? All right. I have a question for you. Of course. So you just recently, um, well, in 2019, made your debut for Team Canada. Is that correct? Yep. How did that feel getting called up to the senior team? I mean, I know when I played for Canada, it was like the coolest experience ever. I mean, being a Canadian, being there, how did how did it feel? Yeah, it was it was it was crazy. So I I prior to that, I'd been called up like seven or eight camps, and I just mm-hmm. I never made my debut. So I was in my back in the back of my mind, I was kind of just like. Pfft. Like not not just another camp, but just like hopefully this time, and obviously you're hopeful every time you go. And um, leading up to the game, I, I was playing really well in training, and everything was going well. And I had uh, like a bit of intuition that maybe this was the time, and it ended up being the time. And obviously, it was it was such a big and historic win for Can- for Canada. And mm-hmm. but uh, it's you know the feelings a second you kind of put on that jersey and yeah. kind of feel that representation for your country. It's like wow, this is. This is real, like you can feel it, right? Mm-hmm. And you're just getting started. That's that's the beauty of it. How is it playing for Coach Herdman? Obviously, you know that I had Coach Herdman as my coach, um, and now he's coaching you guys. So, what is he like as a leader? Yeah, he's he's a very very detailed person, as mm-hmm. you know. Um, he he he's the type of guy that will go every go over every single scenario to make sure. During the game, if you encounter it, you already know what to do. So nothing's really a surprise. Um, you, I can't really say much in terms of his tactics because we played one game against the U.S. and it ended up being the perfect, perfect mm-hmm. tactic, uh, like masterclass into what, in terms of what he decided to do with us. Um, so no, he's been integral in, in, in how much we're, we're growing as a country in, in, in men's football. And obviously we're trying to get to the level that the women's are. 
um, because you guys have you guys have already stamped your your your, uh, your cards in, in world in, in women's world football, and we're not there yet. Um, so it's just a matter of using him and and using all the resources we have right now to to, to kind of do the same as as you guys did, right? Should a kid, you know, coming into that professional free expect? Yeah, it's it, it's one of those ones. It's it's probably I've obviously never had that uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that experience to speak from a personal level on it, but you can you can kind of just say it's one of those ones where you have to try to integrate as quickly as possible. You are the outsider, so try to gel with the guys and kind of find your way in um, with with your personality is obviously a really important thing to do. But on the on, on the football side, it's just Lauren, you know as well. It's just you got to be fit for preseason, you know coming in and and it is the last thing you want to do is get there unfit and you have to get fit. You'd rather Mm -hmm. kind of get there, have a base of fitness where you can kind of work on that and and push from there. But a lot of the work is just, you have two trainings a day, um, not much recovery time. It's, it's literally just pushing your fitness and fitness um, and just trying to learn how the team wants to play that year and, and kind of, fight for your starting spot and, 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 and go from there. Um, but like I said, it's a lot of fitness. It is a lot of fitness. There's no joke. No 30, joke. 15, 30, 15. I don't it's want no anymore. Joke. No um, joke. How, would you, how do you, would you tell these youngsters that are dealing with injuries? I get that question a lot from a lot of our youth about dealing with injuries. Um, I did my ACL, so that was like a long process, but just in general, how do you deal with it? Yeah, there's, there's there's always gonna be light at the end of the tunnel. Um, it might be really hard to see it, like doing your ACL, MCL, any of those, um, but it always comes. Uh, and that road to recovery is long, but just having that mindset that when you come back, it's it's gonna be your time, and um, that whatever is meant for you is not gonna miss you. It's always gonna be there, right? So just having your having your mindset and your eyes on the final goal is really important when you're kind of in that state because it is lonely you kind of do a lot of stuff by yourself and you kind of gotta figure out where you are at in terms of where your body is your mental state so um being able to talk about it and and speak to people about how you feel and kind of keeping that part of yourself engaged is important but like i said just being able to see the light at the end of the tunnel is is something you kind of got to prioritize when you're in that state (laughs) yo all right liam Five things you take or you must have before a game. Five things yeah. I must have before a game. <laughs> Wait, just like take to, anything, to a game. Anything, anything that you, you you must have before a game. Okay, so I love in the morning. I always have toast with peanut butter and jam. Oh. No, no, I can't. I'm I'm a really light eater in the morning. Um, I always have peanut butter and jam. Um, I all like. I drink a lot, a lot of coffee. So I like going for a walk, finding a coffee shop, chilling for a bit. Exactly. Chilling for a bit, just kind of unwinding. Um, I always read on like a game day. I always read, kind of just relax myself and, and, and kind of balance myself. A lot of water, chill. And then obviously I ended a game, you listen to music. You're trying to like find your energy for the day. And, you know, it's time to get ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Wait, what, what are you reading? <laughs> What are you reading right now? I'm actually curious because I'm a huge book nerd. So, so I'm trying to finish 25 books by the end of this year. So I finished okay. three. I'm, I finished three. I'm reading a book. It's right there. It's called The Undoing Project. Oh, I heard uh, that. It's okay. It it's based. Yeah, it's it's about two guys who came up with a. You, okay, you know you know Moneyball. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, you know what it's about? How about like how there's? It's all about statistics. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's it's basically about those two guys who created that like algorithm. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So it's it's if I'm honest, it's a hard read right now. Like I'm struggling yeah. to get through it. <laughs> but, oh, your books to me, man. Oh, if that's what you sleep tonight. Well, <laughs> we are looking forward to watching you crush it this year. For and sure, when we come when we come to Toronto, we're going for coffee. No, okay? we're going to Toronto. We're going to Toronto. I got you guys. Just come to we'll Toronto. Coffee and read books. The best place. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes, thank you, thank you so thank much. You guys. Everyone, thank you guys. follow Liam and thank you guys for listening to the Pro Mentality. We'll see you next time.